Welcome to our video lecture on density. So this is going to go nice and quick. Our objectives for this lecture are uh, we're going to make sure that we can define density. We're going to practice calculating density. If you don't have a calculator out already, now's a great time to grab one or open up the app on your phone uh, or Desmos. Always a good option. We're also going to review some of those sig fig rules that we've been working on. Finally, we're going to determine is density intensive or extensive, coming back to that idea of properties of matter. So quick look at some of the vocab that we should already know. If there is anything that you want to look up, feel free to pause the video. And here we go. All right, so quick think on what even is the definition of density. So density is how tightly packed matter is. So is it super spread out? This is quite not dense. Is it getting closer together? Is it super, super packed tightly together? We're going to have more dense matter here. Basically, density is the amount of mass or matter that's in a given space, and that's literally the mathematical formula mass divided by volume. Remember that volume is the measure of space. We can do that in grams divided by cubic centimeters if we're talking about solid things, and we can do that in milliliters if we're talking about liquids. So there are, of course, some times when we might switch those two guys up. So again, most of the time, solids which are super closely packed together are going to be more dense than liquids, which are more dense than gases, but there is one very common chemical in which the solid version is actually less dense than the liquid and that solid version of this chemical is actually going to float in the liquid version which is really weird but it happens so i want you to noodle on what common very very common chemical has a less dense solid than it has liquid all right and we'll come back to that at the very end of this video like Good, let's practice calculating some density. Remember that density, again, is mass divided by volume. Here is our mass. The mass of a liquid is 8 grams. The volume is 2 milliliters. So I have mass and I have volume. My formula density is mass over volume. This is so easy, I don't even need my calculator. The mass is 8 grams. The volume is 2 milliliters. 8 divided by 2 gives us 4. And our unit label, interestingly, is going to be just the combination of what we divide. So our unit label here is going to be grams divided by milliliters, 4 grams per milliliter. Let's do a quick sig fig check. I have one sig fig right here, and I have one sig fig right here. What's less, one or one? Oh, the answer is one. So we're going to keep one sig fig in our final answer, which is exactly what we have. This is our final answer, four grams per milliliter. Let's do another practice problem. The mass of a liquid is eight grams. Should sound vaguely familiar. The volume is two milliliters. So this is almost the same problem, except our sig figs are a little bit different. So now instead of just eight, we have 8.0 grams. We still have those two milliliters. 8.0 divided by two is still four, but is it going to be four or 4.0? Four or 4.0. So let's count our sig figs. Remember when we multiply and divide, we're gonna count the sig figs and we're going to keep the fewest number of sig figs in our final answer. This piece of data has two sig figs, one, two. Remember that zeros to the right of a decimal do count when there's a non-zero digit. This guy only has one sig fig. One is fewer than two, so we're gonna keep only one sig fig. So our final answer is going to be four, not 4.0. Our unit label is still grams per milliliter. This is our final answer. All right, should look again rather familiar. Go ahead, pause the video, noodle on this one. What do we think the answer is? When you're ready, go ahead and start the video again. So hopefully you did 8.0 grams divided by 2.0 oh, 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 milliliters. That's still four. But here I have one, two sig figs. Here I have one, two, three, four sig figs, two sig figs, four sig figs, two is less than four. So we're gonna keep two sig figs, 4.0 in our final answer. Unit label is still grams per milliliter. Good. If not good, make sure that you make a note of this in your uh, lecture outline. Bring that question to class. So now we're going to flip away from liquids and we're going to think about some solids. So here I have a solid metal cube. The mass is 84 grams. So we know that's going to go into the numerator of our formula. 
the edge lengths are two centimeters. We might be tempted to do an 84 divided by two, but remember that we need the volume, not a length. And so we have to think about what even is volume. So volume is going to be length times width times height. When I have a cube, these guys are all the same. We call it the side. And if I have one, two, three of them, we're going to cube that. So the volume of this guy is going to be two centimeters cubed, which is going to be eight cubic centimeters. This is our volume. This is what we're going to put into our denominator. So 84 divided by 8.0. 84 grams divided by 8.0 cubic centimeters, and that's going to give us 10.5 grams per cubic centimeters. Let's do a quick sig fig check. Here I have one, two sig figs. Here I have one, two sig figs. I get to keep one, two sig figs. This five is going to turn that zero into a one. And so our final answer is going to be just about 11 grams per cubic centimeter because of sig figs. All right, let's do the same exact problem. So we decided that this guy had a density of 10.5 grams per cubic centimeter or 11 when we did a nice sig fig check. I can actually determine the identity of this metal by looking at the known densities of some common metals. And so I'm gonna scan and I see, hey, 10.5 grams per cubic centimeter is silver. So I'm going to predict that the identity of this metal cube is silver, and I can figure that out from the density, which is super cool. All right, let's look at some really oddly shaped solids. So here I've got my lovely dinosaur toy. It would be hard for me to take my ruler and measure his length and his width and his height and get a good volume. So what we're gonna do instead is uh, volume by displacement. Volume by displacement. Made famous, of course, by Archimedes and his Eureka investigation, where he plopped himself into his own bathtub. So we are going to take Mr. Dinosaur, we're gonna plop him into that graduated cylinder, but first we're going to figure out how much water we have in the graduated cylinder. Looks like 4.2. Four, six, eight, four point eight. Oh, remember that we need that uncertain figure, milliliters of water. And then the dinosaur got added. The dinosaur's volume is going to push the water up an equal volume. So now I have 5.2460. Again, we need that um, uncertain figure, 5.60 milliliters. So if I do 5.60 minus 4.80, it looks like the volume of my dinosaur is 0.80 milliliters. Now I can finally do my mass over volume. The mass is 1.2 grams. My volume is 0 0.80 milliliters. And so the density of the dinosaur toy is 1.5 grams per milliliters. Quick sig fig check. I've got one, two here. I've got one, two here. We're going to keep one, two sig figs in our final answer. I've got one, I've got two. We're golden. Final answer just like that. All right, so now coming back to that idea of intensive and extensive properties of matter. Here we have four samples of copper. These are all chunks of copper. Some are quite small. This guy has a mass of only 3.6 grams. Some are quite large, 122 grams of copper. What I want you to do is find the density of each of these samples. So mass divided by volume of this guy, mass divided by volume of this guy, mass divided by volume, mass divided by volume. And I want you to compare the four densities that you find and use that as evidence for, is density intensive or is it extensive? I'm gonna ask you in class. So a uh, quick review of our objectives. Hopefully we accomplished these today. Um, hopefully you can define density. Density is the amount of mass in a given space base, how tightly packed our matter is. Calculated density, remember that is mass over volume. We definitely practice some sig figs. And you are noodling on, is density intensive or extensive? At the beginning of the video, I asked you what common chemical flips these two uh, states of matter where the solid is actually less dense than the liquid. That, of course, is going to be water, plain old H2O 
when we make ice, which is solid water, that ice is actually less dense than the liquid water, our ice floats, which is really, really cool. All right, my friends, that is the end of our lecture. Have a lovely rest of your day.